Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to the penultimate lesson of this series, an introduction to Unreal Engine. In this video, we'll make our endgame credits, which, as the name implies, will be displayed at the end of the game. We will finish this series out in the next video by building our project and producing an executable version of the game. Speaking of which, I've updated the description to video 8 to include a demonstration of someone beating that map. Hey, I did it once, off camera? You gotta believe me, right? But Sly Chemist did so on his live stream. He was playing the game, for lack of a better word, using the executable file I made for the next video. I'll also include a link to this video in the next lesson. Remember, I will be doing this series again but using C++ instead of blueprints. There will be a small delay between the two parts of this series. Make sure to check out the description for this video for more information on widget stroke UMG animations. That said, open up your editor, fire up the project, and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna recreate kind of our menu level again, but we're gonna use this for our credits. So in your maps folder, right click and add a new level in. And we're gonna call this credits. All right, open up that new level. All right, in this new level, we're just gonna do what we did before. We're gonna add a plane in. We are going to move it to position zero, zero, zero. We're gonna move out of it and we're gonna rotate it so we can see the front of the plane. There we go. Except for I think I'm looking at the back of it, so we're gonna rotate it. Oh wait, and there's no lighting. So let's leave it where it is. Switch to unlit for a second. All right, we are looking at the front. Let's grab that same texture we used before, which will be our tech panel. So if you search M tech panel, you'll find it. All right, now let's add in our lighting. So we'll use another point light again. And let's just switch to lit. Let's just move this back a tiny bit. There we go. And like before, we're just going to bring our camera into this map. And we're just going to place it in the same spot we placed it, roughly in the same spot we placed it last time. So search for your camera, drag it onto the map. And we roughly placed it. That's well, way too close to the uh, wall, so we can't see much. Now that doesn't seem to be quite where we placed it. So. We're going to move it to approximately 300 back. That's where we about had it last time. Ooh, that's way too far back, actually. Sorry. Let's move it a little bit closer. Also get it on the right Y axis, so it's going to be on the zero. Let's raise it up a little bit. And just bring it in a bit closer. There we go. That's about where we had it last time. That's why I thought negative 300. Um, all right, so now that we have that set up, we're going to just control S, save everything. And now go into your player settings, and we're going to replicate our BP main menu. We're just going to right click it and do duplicate. This will be BP credit screen, or credit, let's just call it credit mode actually. BP credit mode. Open this up. We're going to change some things out. Pin that into your top if you like pinning it in like I do, or maximize it. Well, it's not going to be a menu reference anymore. We're going to have a new widget. So we're just going to delete this reference. We're going to delete that as well. And we're going to clear this for now. We're also going to get we're going to get rid of that in a actually yeah, get rid of that. Compile, save. Compile, save. Yeah, we're going to get an error cuz there's nothing in here. We are going to set on this world setting that the game mode that overrides will be our credit one. So let's switch over to our BP credit mode and on our camera the details panel we are going to switch it back to auto possess player zero okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our widgets folder and we're gonna duplicate our menu we're just duplicating this so we can skip some of the earlier steps and we're gonna call this WBP credits all right go ahead and open that up and we're going to get rid of everything inside of the scale. Or actually, you can delete the scale box, which will delete everything else. Go to your graph and delete everything in here as well. 
Okay. Now hit compile. And we're going to create something in here real quick, which will be an event begin play sort of task. But it isn't begin play in widgets. Instead, we have construct. So event construct. And we want construct, not pre-construct. We're going to just leave that in there. All right. Let's put that there for a minute. We're not going to do anything with it quite yet because we don't have anything we're going to pull off of here yet. We need to create some stuff. So first thing we're going to do in our designer is we're going to create a vertical box that we'll just put in the center. So go to your panels, find vertical box, and just drag that roughly towards the center. We're going to anchor it on the center of the screen. We'll set the position to 0 in the Y, 0 in the X for now. We're going to move in a second. Put that to 0.5 on the alignment on the X axis so it's centered. And we're going to size to content. It looks, it looks like the box has vanished. It's actually just hidden behind the anchor point for now. Scroll up to your common tools or your common palette section. Grab your text and drag that into your vertical box. Now let's rename this vertical box as our credits box and our text block as our credits text. All right, so in your text block, you're going to put in your text. So I'm going to start with platformer because it's the name of the game. I'm going to hold shift enter and go down a line and I'm going to just add in a little subtitle which will be a tutorial. And then I'm going to hit shift enter a couple more times. And I'm just going to add a little text. Bye, Zach. Two neurons edited by or videos edited by Zach. Two neurons again because I've done all this, you know, on my own so far. But I really, but I really haven't done it on my own. I've had a lot of support from the community, so I want to add some special things. So I'm gonna go down a couple of lines and add special things in. And we have Stevening, who has made some assets for my other tutorial, who's just been a support in general. Uh, we have a guy who I call Bear, who has supported me since the start of the RTS tutorial series, which there will be a link to in the end cards typically. And a gentleman named Bao Chico, or sorry, it's just Chico Wow Wow, who has supported me and has helped me troubleshoot things when I've been struggling to get some code working. And of course, I want to add a thanks to all of the YT, Discord, and Reddit dev communities that have supported me in this project. And to viewers like you. All right, so all right, click off it now. You're going to see the text shows up, but it looks a bit weird. So I want to change some things. I want to shift the alignment. I want to have it centered and you can see it's still a bit weird so I'm just gonna split this up a bit so it's on a different line there and then a different line after that that should get me all centered there we go now I'm not gonna put this on the center of the screen I could just leave the sorry about that grab your credits box me my move stuff not the text I could just leave it in the center and say that's our credits, but that'd be really rather boring. So instead, I'm going to put them below the screen here. I'm going to make sure they're still on the Y of Z. That's the wrong one. I'm going to lower that back down. That's the wrong one. I'm going to lower it back down. And I'm actually going to set the X to zero because that's going to be where I want that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make the text scroll up and then vanish. So what I'm going to do is I am going to click this animation button on the bottom. So this will add a new animation uh, queue, and I'm going to call this credits roll. And on the bottom here, we have compiler results and timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select timeline, and there we go. We have this new timeline uh, screen here, and I want to add in to my credits roll some information. So I'm going to highlight credit roll and then we track and everything else becomes uh, visible. If it isn't visible, make sure you have your animation selected. If you don't, it's going to be grayed out. All right, so on tracks, so I'm going to select this and I want to select my credits box. 
because that's what I want to move. So it's going to move everything that's inside of it as well. And you'll notice we have this credit box here. We have a timeline on this side. I want to do the credits, say, for three seconds. And I'm going to create a track. So I'm going to click this plus track. And I'm going to select transform. And then you notice it creates this little marker right here at the zero second mark. Next thing I want to do is I want to drag this out to about three seconds. There we go. And I want to add in one more track. So again, I'm going to click track and hit transform. And now you notice that it isn't all the way that like gray out here because now it knows this is only going to play for three seconds. Here's my start point. Here's my end point. So I'm going to highlight this first one. It's going to move my timeline back there. And on my transform, there's that little triangle on the left. I'm going to click it and open it up. And then I have my translation, my rotation, my scale, and my shear. I care about my translation. So I'm going to open that up. And we have my x and y values. Well, I want my y at 0 and I want my x at 0. So I'm not going to make any changes here. I'm going to go over to the next bit. And on my y-axis, I want to set this to about negative 1,500. Uh, let's make that negative 1,600. Let's keep going. Make this negative 2,000. Oh, that was a little bit too much. But that works for me. It gets it off screen. And then after that, I'm going to drag out. Well, it vanishes. I don't need to actually add a vanish in. Actually, let's go back and make this negative 1,500 so that it's at the top of the screen when it vanishes. So it's there, negative 1500. And I'm just going to drag out a tiny bit more. And I'm going to add one more track. And I'm going to add visibility. Now, I actually have to add another visibility track in or this won't work properly. So at 3.10 seconds, I want this to be hidden. Problem is, it's going to be hidden the entire time. So I need to go back to the beginning. And I need to add in a visibility track again. So now we have that gray bar down there. And here, it's going to be visible. So as it scrolls up, it stays visible, gets to that point, and then it vanishes. All right, so when we play this, so you can preview by hitting play, you can see it scrolls up, and then it vanishes. There we go. We just need to make this widget play the credits. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to graph. And on our event construct, what we're going to do is we are going to drag off here and type in play animation. All right. Now that we have that there, we need to tell it what animation to play. Because you can have more than one animation, potentially. And some animations might be triggered on button clicks. If you have it where you click on a menu and the button vibrates for some reason, well, you'd have multiple buttons that will have different animations, potentially. So we have this animation credit rule up here. We're just going to drag this in. We're going to get it. And we're just going to plug it into animation. Now, at the end of this, what I want it to do, I want it to switch the menu. But I can't just go open main menu. I have to do a delay. Otherwise, I'll do it during the middle of the credits. And I'm going to set the delay for three and a half seconds. So I'm going to type in 3.5 for three and a half seconds. And then I'm going to do open level. And my level name is main menu, I believe. I'm going to double check that in a second now. So we go back to our maps. Yep, it's main menu. So that should automatically switch the main menu after the credits roll. But I still have to tell the game in this particular level to display the menu, or to display the widget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my BP credit mode here. And now my construct none, remember this is our construct widget, I'm going to put my credits in. I'm going to delete a reference to it. And I'm going to go back actually into my widget because I skipped a step. And I'm going to put in a reference to my player controller. So. Oh, we already have that, actually. We have our game mode reference from our duplicate. Sorry, I'm going to delete the save game, at least. Compile save. There we go. And off this game mode reference, I'm going to do a reference to self. So let me just refresh this real quick. So if you have an issue where it's not giving you a self, just click refresh node, drag off. Ah, so I did skip this up. I was wrong. So go back to your widget in your game mode reference. Change this out to the correct game mode, which is BP credit mode. Compile, save. Now refresh this widget and plug the self into there. So 
So earlier it was still looking for our other game mode. And then we're going to do a promote to variable. Plug that into there. I forgot to name the variable, so I'm going to quickly right click or hit F2, rename. This will be credits screen ref. And then my add to viewport, just plug that back into there. Plug my credits in as a getter into there. Now, I've been doing this getter instead of just, uh, I could do something else instead. I'm just going to break that for a second. I could take from this pin and plug straight into there. That is a viable option. I have not been doing that just because I tend to, it, it's a little bit of superstition on my part. I always feel like that's never going to work properly. And in some cases, I've had, had some issues with it, and I found that this is a slightly more reliable. That could be just completely on me. All right, so we're going to compile and save. By completely on me, I mean it might actually just be my bad luck. All right, for the people who have done programming, by the way, I've had a compiler not find IO stream before. If you don't know what that means, it means it couldn't recognize keyboard input, which is a base library that all compilers have. All right, so now we're back in our main window. Hit play, and we should see our credits go by. They're going by really quick. And then we switch back to our main menu. Now, we're not quite done yet. Hit quit. Let's go to our enums. We need to add in our new level name for our new credit screen. So it is credits. So in our enum folder, open up your enums, add a new line by clicking new, and we're going to add in credits. Compile save, or just save, there's no compile button, sorry. And then control S save everything. All right, with everything saved, what we're going to do next is we're going to go into our maps. All right, so open up your third level. And at the very end of this level, we're going to add in our trigger for the end of the level. This one will bring us to the credit screen instead. So just find your triggers and level trigger right there. You notice that it's been updated. And the reason why we had that little check mark is because we've updated the enums that it uses. Set that to zero on the Y axis. Hit R for resizing it and just drag it out a bit and up. Oops, that was not up, that was multiple directions. There we go. Okay, so let's just test this out. I'm going to play from here. So we're at the end of the uh, level. Oh, I forgot to do one thing that was very important when I did that. I forgot to say where I wanted to go. So I defaulted to level one, which is where the default on that is set or what we set the default to, that is. All right, so it's end level two, and that is credits. Let's try that one more time. Play from here. And there we go. All right, I am gonna make one more change to the credits. I am going to slow them down a bit, just because I don't like how fast they're going. I'm gonna add a delay at the start. So let's go to our widgets. Let's go to our credit widget there. And we're going to put another delay in. So it'll be delay. And we're going to do a delay of, say, half a second. So 0.5. And just plug that into there now. So now it delays. Go back to your designer. And we're going to take this endpoint. We're going to move this, say, so it's instead of at 3 seconds and uh, the play time will be 5 seconds. So we're going to have the visibility go a little bit after five seconds and we're going to drag out our last transform here to five seconds but to drag it out I'm going to shift drag to select all those little dots and I'm going to drag all those dots out to five seconds now go back to your graph we need to change this to 5.5 seconds before we switch to the main menu all right hit play oops got what map we were in I'm just going to go actually I'm just going to control s save Go back to our maps, go to our credits, and I'm going to hit play here. So that delay, there we go. And there go the credits. And they vanish, and we switch to it, and we can start a new game. So, in the final tutorial for this series, what we will do is we will switch it up so that we can build this project and see how a executable file can be constructed. We'll also talk about, you know, test builds where we can t build the lighting out a bit as well. And as always, if you've enjoyed this series, 
go ahead and hit that like button down in the down below. And if you want to see any particular tutorials for any topics, let me know in the comments or join the Discord community. Show off your project, show the platform where you're working on or whatever game you're working on. If you have any questions, there is always people about who will be willing to answer. You know, I'm there as well. And as always, I hope to see you in my other tutorials. I hope and also hope that you have a wonderful day.